so uh, i'll be sharing my slides just confirm once you are you can see my uh, ppt can you see my screen yes sir please go for the slideshow option yes it's clear now please go okay so uh, the lecture has to be delivered in hindi or english english i feel english sir okay uh so today's topic is introduction to uh, pain so basically uh, in this session we will know about the pain and the physiology of pain and principles of pain management and we can we will know about the different barriers that which make us uh, as a barriers that we cannot uh, make the adequate pain relief and then history taking format of pain and pain assessment and then list of uh, assessment tools for age different age groups and the magnet uh, so th this we will discuss and then if we see the magnitude of cancer pain uh, incidence then more than 75 percent of patients are in the advanced stage when they are first diagnosed with chronic illness and then if we see that pain the most common symptoms in 70 to 90 percent of people which are advanced cancer and 60 percent people uh, they are in palliative care but they are non cancer or they are differ, uh, suffering from different chronic illness like maybe ckd maybe uh, bronchial asthma or maybe copd or different illness approximately 30 to 50 percent of the people with cancer experience pain while undergoing treatment because uh, cancer patients they have to undergo the different painful procedures like uh, re, um, like chemotherapy so followed by chemotherapy there is chemotherapy induced neuropathy and they feel pain so these kind of things happen and for treatment also they have to do uh, bone marrow uh, biopsy and all those so they have to undergo so many painful procedures so 30 to 50 percent of the people with cancer experience pain while undergoing treatment and in case of non-cancer uh, they are like 20 to 30 percent of patients they feel pain when they are undergoing treatment we'll know more while we're going to the uh, other slides as well more than two-third of the patients have more than one type of pain they, so different types we will discuss then you will understand the things so nowadays pain is a considered as a fifth vital science yes so we have already fourth vital science tpr temperature pulse respiration and bp but who has recommended that the patient if they are having pain or they may not having pain, we should at least ask them whether they are having pain or not. So in it, in 24 hours, in your setup, whatever the protocol protocols, maybe once in a day, maybe twice in a day, wherever you take the vitals, please ask the patient that whether the patient is having pain or not. So what is pain? Can anybody give me an answer? Please put your answer in chat box. What do you mean by pain? If I say that I am in pain or maybe my patient is in pain, what is pain? Yes? Unbearable or uncomfortable feeling. Yes, yes, very nice. Then unpleasant feel, feeling, very good. Then anything else? Untolerable. Yeah. The feelings um, which one cannot, one the body cannot cope up, cope up with one's own bearable situation. Yeah, indirectly it's also uh, uh, correct. Pain is an unpleasant signal that something hurts. Yes, very nice. So. Let's begin with the slides. Okay, once more. So pain is, according to Indian Association of Study of Pain, IASP, they have given that pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with, resembling that associated with actual and potential 
tissue damage. Then we have realized that in palliative care patients, I think introductory class has already gone. So palliative care also works on four pillars, like physical, psychological, uh, social, and spiritual. So they have four pillars on the pill that four pillars palliative care is tending. So this pain also are four aspects, physical aspect, psychological aspect, social and spiritual aspect. So from different aspects, if the patient is suffering from pain, it's hurt us. Then Dr. Robert Toycross, who is the, who was the uh, like uh, professor of Oxford University, he said that pain is what the person says it hurts it can be in different way like you loved a person you loved some patient or you like not patient maybe somebody just you loved and he never like scold you back but today without any reason he scold you very badly so it will be a painful sensation for you it will be hard your mind hard that yes this person, I really like him so much, but today I don't know why he called me very badly. From today onwards, I don't like him. So these things, so these are the things that pain is what the person says it hurts. It can be physical, it can be psychological or different aspects. Now, pain assessment for nurses. Nurses are the professional caregiver for the for a patient and also they works like a eyes of a doctor doctor is not in the ward for 24 into 7 we are the nurses those are the patient side or bedside with the patient for 24 into 7 so whatever we give the report the doctor has to believe on it so we have to be perfect enough so that we will give the correct report to the doctor and doctor can treat the patient's pain perfectly. Then report, report with patient. It has a very good impact. Whenever you, will, you are very close to a person, whenever you build a repo with your patient, then whatever the direction you are giving to your patient, they will just believe on you. They will maintain it properly. So outcome will be good. If they have some bad impact, bad impression on you then if you give the any direction they will feel okay she is like that only or he is like that only she is always irritated we will do what we did before so they will do by themselves maybe they will not take the medication on time so the patient yes, treatment impact will be something not like the person who has a good report next immensely guide the management. Whenever we have the good report, then we can give the, our input perfectly and it will immensely guide the management in the perfect way. Now, what is pain if we see that pain is a subjective experience. We cannot see somebody's pain. We cannot see somebody's feeling of pain. We can see the patient's grimace, patient is crying, patient is telling us that he is on pain. Some uneasy the patient is feeling, some unrestlessness patient is having, but how much intensity the patient is having the pain, we cannot see. So this is pain is always a subjective experience and it differs between person to person. Maybe the same, same diagnosis two patients with same age group may not have the same intensity of pain. So the person to person, it differs and the tolerance also it differs. Sometimes I, I think so all of you are a nurse and you have experienced the same thing. If you are giving 10 people the same injection I am, now two people will be there that they will just look at the injection and they'll tell, okay, nice, no problem. And eight people will be there who will grimace like anything, who will make their body hard, this and that. So their perceptions towards the pain is different. So their intensity, their feeling, feeling of pain, tendency, like intensity is little different. So we have to treat 
the different uh, intensity of the, whatever they are suffering from. Then physical pain, it impact the physical capability. Then emotional experience, emotional, in, uh, like emotional perspective of pain, it's include like depression, anxiety. If, so these are the things which include the patient's intensity or increase the patient intensity of pain. Spiritually, uh, like challenging different uh, spiritual beliefs. Maybe uh, patient did something wrong before even patient knows that. And in the later life, if he is suffering from any chronic illness, he will feel that, oh, I did some mistake. That's why God gives me punishment. So he will correlate the things. And this is something that we cannot uh, like we cannot do tell the patient okay you don't think like that but we can definitely counsel with the proper personnel that that's why we need the multidisciplinary team as a nurse if we see that no no no, it is god god has not given you punishment how you know that god has not given punishment how you know that god given punishment so we are not the perfect person may not be the perfect person for every patient to explain the things but we have to take the help from others other like perfect professionals for the perfect uh, aspects then social pain maybe sometimes because of the chronic illness somebody even patients relatives they are fed up continuously they are taking care of these patients and sometimes patients are so depression that they also misbehave with their pay attendance the attendance will go okay he is like that only okay don't do don't do the things so these are the things give them the intensity increase the intensity of pain give them the reason Demisicilli Mary Saunders, she has given, uh, she has told about the total pain. The total pain is the all four aspects of pain. This is the physical, psychological, social, and spiritual. This all four aspects come in combinedly is called the total aspect of pain. Now, come to the pathophysiology of pain. If I, if I like to just you just click and you just go through the your book it will be okay but for now i'll explain in three words one is efferent pathway central nervous system and then efferent pathway efferent pathway which takes the sensation from the sensory nerve endings to the brain it takes the stimulus to the brain then brain will decide what kind of motor activity the body needs to take and then accordingly if some mosquito is biting then we just immediately move our hand or leg that part of body that the mosquito could not bite us again so this pain will go to the our central nervous system and central nervous system will give the motor how what kind of motor activity the body should perform then accordingly body performs the things so these are the simple pathophysiology of pain okay now there is a one sentence it called in pain management it's called central sensitization many of the time you have you might have encountered that patient told you that oh actually my pain starts in the epigastric region but gradually when it's increased my whole abdomen starts aching and I cannot define that which, what are the places, my whole abdomen is paining only. I cannot localize. So these are the things. It's like the simple thing what we do in our student life. If somebody, some, if one ma'am asks us to do an assignment that we are not, or our in charge has given us some tasks that we are not willing to do. So what do we do? We do. Uh, sometimes we do directly that okay no no sister we are i want to i don't want to do the same and if we feel that okay some higher authority like ans dns has given me some work so we feel little bad to do the back answer of no so then we do okay one thing we can we can increase our group so i'll tell my friend you know dns asks me to do these things do you know dns asked me that these things let let's go together and tell that it's not possible so you make the group to increase your strength same thing the pain pain also do whenever the pain starts and 
he the pain is not getting the uh, like uh, what to say that pain is not um, getting the your concern then pain will start recruiting the other uh, peripheral um, peripheral sensory nerve ending also so it's called the centrally sensitization or receptor recruitment and the pain intensity will increase now what are the types of pain if we see then of course this is the acute pain and chronic pain okay so but here in palliative care we provide the palliative care for the patient who are chronic illness so maximum of them they are having the chronic pain so if we define the chronic pain there are two types of pain nociceptic pain and neuropathic pain nociceptic pain again we can divide in visceral and somatic somatic is the covering tissue our skin okay skins muscles these are the covering tissue of our body structure so this is the somatic okay these are the somatic uh, tissues and whenever there is any cut or something like ulcer it's called the somatic it may be the somatic pain whenever some maybe some operation done surgical procedure done and followed by the patient is feeling pain inside the body Ah, so this may be a visceral visceral is related to organ okay and somatic is related to tissues it may be bone tissue it may be soft tissue okay now come neuropathy okay let's continue with that and nociceptive pain the quality may be like gripping pain aching pain throbbing type of pain okay so this kind of quality of pain we can see in nociceptive pain in case of neuropathic pain what we can see we can see the tingling sensation maybe burning sensation web style pain okay so neuropathy means nerve damage neuro means nerve pathy means damage the pain which is associated with nerve damage it's called neuropathic pain so neuropathic pain may be diabetic neuropathy the patient may have the patient may have chemotherapy induced neuropathy sometimes some of the medications which uh, induced the neuropathy so patients sometimes have that neuropathy because of some other medications also so there are some re so so many reasons that neuropathy can happen okay so in neuropathy there are two term actually we need to keep in mind one is hyperalgesia one is allodyne hyperalgesia is actually it's a painful stimulus but the patient feels more than the normal okay so patient feels more than the normal like those who have their younger brother or sister okay they can understand if you just touch your younger sister or brother they'll just cry like anything and they'll give the complaint to your parents and they will beat you like anything so <laughs> this is hyperalgesia actually you have touched them in terms of hitting them but it was not that intensity that they were crying so this is hyperalgesia an increased response to normally painful stimulus allodynia is sometimes we can see that if we just touch the patient hand or feet they will just grimace oh it's painful so even they are feeling that non painful stimulus also if a painful stimulation to the stimulus like light touch that does not normally cause pain if the patient feel pain in that kind of activity also then it's called allodynia hyperalgesia is it was little painful like putting a cannula it's a painful procedure but after because of putting a cannula if the patient cry for a 2 hours it's not a normal it's hyperalgesia if we see the etiology of pain then disease related sometimes is the comorbidity related or treatment related disease related like tissue infiltrations nerve damage nerve compressions sometimes muscle spasm and raised icd sometimes comorbidity related if the patient is having low back ache arthritis 
angina or some kind of trauma before then because of that the patient may have pain treatment related may be surgery post surgically the surgical side the patient may have pain then chemotherapy induced neuropathy i have already explained sometimes radiation because of radiations no the in the area where the radiotherapy was given that muscles got stiffness basically muscles got stiffness and the patient has to go for physiotherapy if some head and neck patient they are getting continuously radiotherapy they has to go for the radiotherapy for chewing and swallowing exercise because they are these muscles you no know, is got stiffness and because of that they feel so much of pain so they have to go for physiotherapy as well so this can uh, be excuse me i uh, what medication what chemotherapy medication cause the stiffness of that things i was Is talking about chemotherapy cause neuropathy because of uh -huh. that the patient may have pain and radiation related muscle spasm can happen ah uh, right only the radiation yeah i told that radiation related okay sometimes it's the debility related like pressure sores constipation if or sometimes bladder spasm why is pain is not been managed properly if we see that sometimes patient have the fear that if we just keep on telling them that uh, i'm having pain i'm having pain they have given me as much uh, more better medication but still i am having pain no if i just telling them that i am having pain i am having pain they will feel that no medication is working so they will just stop my treatment and my treatment will pause here only so better not to tell anything sometimes they feel that okay uh, in hindi there is a dialogue no mart ko dard nahi hota hai to the person uh basically a male person who is male dominated now so if he shows that he is in pain in front of his wife or uh like his daughters and all so they will feel oh papa is very weak so appearing of weak instead of appearing weak he just show that no no i'm strong i'm not feeling pain okay i'll not complain about pain because this i can even tolerate okay sometimes appearing to be drug seeking so if i complain continuously the medical team will assume that i am addicted to the pain medications so they will just transfer me to the other hospital like psychiatric hospital for addiction addiction disorder okay so my this treatment will get paused so better not to inform anything and sometimes like uh, sometimes they believe that okay you see this pain i got because i did some mistakes and this is my punishment punishment is punishment no i have to just suffer there is no point of keep on telling that i am having pain i am having pain because medical team also have limitation i think then they do not have any medication more to give to me to relieve my pain they have changed my medication three times four times now also it's not working that means it's because of my punishment no what is the use of complaining so they just stop complaining so what are the barriers so barriers can be the four four types first is healthcare provider related in different hospitals like they have they are not maintain uh, nurse patient is to nurse ratio properly no so they feels that okay one thing the whenever the patient is having pain they will just tell us if they are not telling that means they are not having pain so provide healthcare provider related one thing is that they do not want to increase their burden they are already overburdened they feels that okay whenever the patient is having pain he or she will come to me what is the point of like every patient are you having pain are you having pain are you having pain what is the point of i do not have this much of time so this is the healthcare provider related barrier second also the healthcare provider related one thing that they are not trained enough they do not know how to do the pain assessment that's why they don't want to do secondly healthcare system related like different hospital they have the different hierarchy system so 
professor they basically comes in the working days maybe 10 to 2 o'clock after that they are not in the hospital so they are um, under that they have the um, students maybe uh, register pg students so they will be there so whenever your patient is on pain you have to inform the on duty sister in charge sister in charge will inform to the on duty doctor on duty doctor will tell okay this patient is under that professor so let me the call so he will call some of the resident doctor or maybe some of the pg student pg student will tell oh this patient is getting already so many of medications uh, just wait i'll just confirm with sir he may be busy in some other work so he'll confirm with his sir after half an hour by that time the patient will suffer no so this is the system related barrier that we have to maintain that hierarchy third point is patients and family related sometimes patients like in the previous slide we have seen that in the different reasons patient do not want to complain repeatedly so this may be a patient related barrier sometimes family member they are so fed up so fed up and they believe that okay see 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 whenever i was just sitting be beside him he was telling that there is so much of so much of pain now i went outside now see he is playing with his mobile and he is laughing like anything do you think that this patient is having pain the family members just assumed that the patient is not on pain this can be a family members related and this type of family members give a bad impact to the nursing personnel also so they think okay his attendants already told that he is like that only so he is like that so they're they're just stopping stop that assessment of pain whatever they were doing oh he though he is telling pain but it's no pain so they will mark as a no pain next policy or law related behavior policy means we have different uh like who analgesic letter we can see in the next class so who is analgesic letter there is a letter that for the strong opioids strong opioids though, but all the hospital they do not have the license for procuring the strong opioids but patient has having pain and it is not relieving with the weak opioids and other painkillers so patient has to get the uh, strong opioids but the patient, hospital is not having the license no so this is not the fault of the patient this is the fault of the policy or the law of this hospital of the or the states next patient at the risk of under treatment like who deny pain who speaks different language like one of the patient if from the manipur one patient they went to the treatment for kerala or some other uh, maybe tamil nadu so if they speaks only uh, manipuri language so nobody can understand the patient is having pain no so speaks different language uh, form of different cultures form of different cultures means sometimes we <clears throat> we tell them no this is the painkiller you always take after meal but some of the patients are there who has the habit of having keep on fasting in monday now ramzan is going on patient is not taking food the whole day so they will not take painkiller because you told no the painkiller has to take after meal only so this patient is in risk of under treatment next non verbal or cognitive impaired patient they will tell you that it's so much of pain so much of pain you will go with the injections okay uh, listen i want to give you an injection as you are having pain pain who told you i am mean, having pain immediately they will change their word so they are cogn cognitively impaired or maybe sometimes non verbal or chill sometimes because of children or older adult those who do not have the teeth no older adult their language we cannot understand sometimes so because of then only they cannot express the things properly and having history of addictive disease the patient who is having the history of addictive disease they need little higher dose than the normal because their tolerance power is little high 
if we see the pain assessment self reporting is the best always we have to take the pain history from that person who is having pain behavior if the patient cannot express us verbally if we see the patient's behavior sometimes in icu patient is unconscious but patient is having grimace like anything patient is little restless patient is withdrawing from the pain side uh, the body parts so if we try to uh, assume from the behavior so sometimes it may mislead also the patient may not have the pain that much but patient may be irritated for other reasons psychologically physiologically functionally if we think that okay the patient is having this much of metastasis bone metastasis this is that okay the patient might have 8 by 10 numerical rating scale pain though the patient cannot express so the physiologically we cannot just assume it will not always reliable and proxy report sometimes in palliative care patients they cannot bring the patient every time in opd so the patient caregiver comes and give the report so they cannot give the whole report proper report to the healthcare personnel so it is least effective because the palliative care team cannot give the or treat the medication treat the pain as effectively as it need to be If we see the pain history taking, history taking format is the OPQRST. O is onset. When did the pain started? Okay. Next, P is provocative or palliative care factor. What makes the patient pain worse and what makes the patient pain better? So like if the patient is having abdominal pain, basically abdominal pain patients, they always push their abdomen and they will, they will like to have the lean forward position. No, if we ask them to lie down supine position, they'll feel more pain because there will be the abdominal muscle stretching. No, so they will feel that, okay, so the provocative factor may be sleeping in supine position. Then palliative care factor, which makes the patient pain better. If I try to lean forward, then my pain goes away. So this may be a palliative factor. What is, then next is Q is quality. What kind of pain the patient is having? It is dull aching, it is sharp pain, burning pain, it is tingling. So what kind of pain? It will give you the data that whether the patient is having nociceptic or neuropathy or the combination of nociceptic and neuropathy. Yes. Next is radiation. Whether the pain goes one place to another place or not. If the pain goes one place to another place, that means there is neuropathic component. So along with the nociceptic pain, the patient need to be treated through some medications which can be used for, which is basically used for the neuropathic pain. Next is S means severity. Severity is how severe the patient is having pain, maybe mild, moderate or severe according to the scale. But whatever the scales we are using previously, suppose you have used numerical rating scale in this morning for a patient in for assessment of a pain. Now, whenever, you are assessing the pain for the same patient in afternoon time, you should use the same numerical rating scale only. Then only you will understand how much your treatment is working for this patient. If you change the scale, then your result will be changed. Then you cannot find the proper impact of your treatment. Next is temporal factor. T means temporal factor. Temporal factor timing one is temporal factor means sometimes they feel that okay doctor whatever the medications you have given i'm totally comfortable but you know whenever i try to immediately get rid from the bed i feel pain whenever my brother in uh, whenever my brother try to uh, like try to do my dressing for the, my wound i feel pain 
so this is also called the incidental pain this is the temporal factors okay pain versus suffering you can see three pictures yes now first picture the lady is having tattoo yes the lady is having tattoo second picture the middle picture means the lady is having injection this is color is little red so it may be a multivitamin injection okay third lady is not having anything so which picture who is suffering more you can see you can see and you can just write third 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 one no yeah yeah so pain and suffering is little different the patient who is suffering may be in pain the patient who is in pain may not be suffering because see the first picture she is having tattoo which will enhance her beauty no all the girls they are having no spin earrings okay so whenever they make the holes it's painful but they never suffer they will think feel good no after few days i can wear earring good earrings which i have seen before for a my uh, some cousins i'll i'll use the same so she is enjoying the tattoo second whenever we give the injection to the any of the patients no they feel pain but they never suffer because they feels that okay today i am having pain okay because this pain i am having because i am getting the treatment and after few days my all my problems will be recovered so with this hope they never feels pain but third picture you see nobody is pricking her nobody is giving her anything just they make them maybe isolated she is just sitting in the corner nobody is talking to her nobody is here to talk, uh, look at her so she is isolating herself or maybe somebody isolated so because of that she is having some kind of suffering in her mind yes so this is the difference between pain and suffering so whenever the patient is having chronic pain these all are one and two picture one and two they are having temporal pain temporal pain for the good reasons so they are not suffering but in case of palliative care patients whenever they are having pain for a very long time and repeatedly they have to come for the pain management and sometimes after few days the the drug which is working right now maybe after few days it's not working so for this type of patients they feel anxiety or depression why it is like that why all the medications is not working for me so this kind of things give them the suffering so being a palliative care nurse we have to think in their way now we will see some sort of pain assessment scales one is numerical rating scales where it's in this scales 0 to 10 is there 0 is no pain where 10 is worst possible pain so according to that the patient has to verbalize that how much the patient is having pain so we have to ask them then we have to explain them the scale then patient will give you the uh rip, like tell you the how much the patient is having pain the it has to modify sometimes the patient who don't know the calculation suppose so sometimes in maharashtra no uh, when i was working in sipla they know the takka takka means percentage okay so they know the takka so we have to always ask them oh kitna takka aapka pain kam ho gaya so how much how much takka your pain reduced okay so we have to tell them and they used to give us the report so numerical rating scale you can just modify according to the patient's understanding level this is the ong baker scale okay ong baker scale is the depend on the facial expression 
so it is also the 0 to 10 and where 1 to 3 is for mild pain 4 to 6 is for the moderate pain and 7 to 9 is severe pain but 10 is worst possible pain rone wala pain the pain like crying okay this is the flex scale basically it used for the children from one year to five years of age three to five years both time but after three years if the patient if the child can uh, like express in one two three four no we can even use the numerical rating scale but if the child cannot express it properly then we can use flex scale whereas that face leg like activity cry and consolidate there are four five aspects on the depend on that we have to assess the things you please go through all those scales because here i do not have time to explain all the scales okay so you please go through all the scales next class will be mine on 17th if you are having any difficulties just let me know okay i have not put it one scale for the uh, zero to one years okay it's called the uh, new uh, neonatal pain assessment scales okay nips neonatal and infant pain assessment scales nip scale okay you please go through all those scales now factors affecting in pain like pain increased by anger anxiety depression and some kind of um, uh, mental isolation social abnormal um, uh, abandonment and lack of understanding about the disease condition maximum of the patients like doctors and different doctors they do not have the, the time to explain all the things and sometimes they explain but the in front of the patient whenever they explain the patient and their attendance they do not have that understanding level that they could understand the patient uh, the doctors whatever he has explained so sometimes they okay i came that day they have they done blood test i have done i have done all those things they gave me just one unit of blood now they are asking for again to do the blood test my all money is going for blood test but i am not getting any kind of treatment but they are doing the same they did cbc where hemoglobin was less so they decided okay let's give one unit of blood after giving one or two unit of blood they will repeat the cbc no in order to give the chemotherapy so they will give the cbc again the patient will feel that oh uh, before the three days before i have done my <clears throat> blood test report why they are asking oh they they took commission from the laboratory people that's why they are asking for repeated blood test so they do not have the understanding of their disease condition they do not have the idea of their goals of care they do not have the idea of the plan actually what is the plan of the medical team so that's why they feel more anxious more depressious which will enhance their pain feeling of pain and pain decreased by explanation acceptance of the disease relaxation creative activity or sometimes by proper uh, communication of the disease conditions treatment plan to the patient and role of their role of pain counseling come so the counseling has to do properly Let's do a quick <coughs> case study, okay? Just go to your chat box, okay? And go to your chat box and one more thing. Just I'm reading, I'm read out the my case studies. You just give me answer, okay? Ram is a 12 years of old crying in pain. What cell scale you, sh you should uh, use to measure the pain? Yes, Ohm Baker scale, okay. Ohm Baker scale, sir. Any other, any other, any other? Yeah. 
NPIS. Okay. Why NPIS? Uh, that is for the uh, three to five, you know. <laughs> Nipskel N N P I S nahi N I P S okay N I P S N I P S for zero to one year and flex scale F L S C C flex scale was for one to uh like one point one to five years three to five years one point one to three to five years next numerical rating scale and Ong Baker scale but there was one slide you we have to take the history from the patient directly try to get the history from the patient Ong Baker scale for the patient those who cannot express we have to just look at them look at their behavior and then we have to assume so it has the less possibility for the accuracy the 12 years of old child, he can definitely express, he can talk. Why can't we use the NRS scale, numerical rating scale? He knows the calculation. He knows one, two, three, four, five. So instead of having, because flex scale will not work for them because 12 years of old child will not having the uh, like cry or not having that uh, that kind of uh, motor activity, no? So, numerical rating scale we can use. This patient is 12 years of old, okay? Now, move to the next. Suja is 30 years suffering from oral cancer, complaining of pain. What scale would you use? Yes? Now, Ong Baker scale, very good. Because she is suffering from oral cancer, she might, she may not express the thing. But here also, one thing we can do, instead of using Ong Baker scale, if the patient cannot express, definitely we can use Ong Baker scale. But <coughs> instead of putting them the Ong Baker scale, we can ask them if they can write they can write how much pain they are having. They can, I can just draw the scale and I can ask them to round it. They do not have to express the thing. They, do, they just have to round the number where their pain is. So the numerical, modified numerical rating scale or maybe Wong Baker scale will be useful. Yes? Thank you so much for your active participation, actually. Thank you, sir. So if you have any query, you can just ask me. I'll try my best to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Sudeep, uh, for the wonderful session. Uh, happy to see you again. Uh, so anybody have any question regarding this topic, please ask him. So what kind of palliative care we will provide to the patient at home who is in pain, severe pain? Uh, whenever there is the patient in home environment and having the severe pain, we have to take the detailed history. One thing that whether the patient was taking the previous, any previous medication at home and uh, currently the patient stopped it. Uh, second is what is the last dose of medication the patient took. Third is what are the, which area the patient is having pain. Then according to that, we have to do the correct, the correct tables. And then if there is any kind of like see, we have to take the patient for the uh, medical team to reevaluate and do the needful because home environment you cannot uh, do any kind of procedure uh, for the severe pain thank but you sir maximum, but maximum, 
maximum cases we have encountered that in home environment they forgot to take the last dose of the medications because of that now the patient is having severe pain so we have to do that correct the correctables uh, so uh, can i add few things about yes yes uh, please so uh, regarding uh, suraya's uh, question uh, so uh, most of the time we will uh, manage the patient at home uh so if you have a trained the nurse uh, with a physician at least a, a call, uh, the nurse is able to call the physician over the phone you can uh, manage the patient pain at home so usually our nurses our palliative care nurses if the, if we understand a severe pain patient in the home so uh, they are not able to reach our uh, center because uh, most of the patients are uh, living uh, in urban uh, rural area they are not able to uh, reach easily uh, but sometimes uh, they uh, need to be carried by others so that time what we do is our nurses will uh, carry uh, the pain uh, killers pain medications along with them and uh, they will give a morphine trial in the patient's home itself if 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 the uh, situation is okay you have to give a adequate explanation to the patient and the family and with the help of a doctor you can give if you have a trained uh, nurse is there so we uh, need a good uh, yeah good support we need a team work yes. so otherwise we can't but uh, yes but uh, only only in uh, south um, south india only i have seen this kind of practice but uh, in the northern area or maybe maharashtra also i have not even seen that's why here to people from the all india uh, so yeah. maybe outside of india also so that's why i didn't tell that uh, yeah i understand i understand but uh, you just setup, no? yeah just you uh, should know uh, you can give uh, any anywhere but you need a proper support from the physician so if you have a good palliative care physician there you can uh, give some med pain medication our aim is to uh, reduce the patient suffering if the patient is having pain try to reduce their suffering if they are not able to come to the hospital try to reduce the pain in their uh, premises so that is why if possible you can do it with the help of a trained physician okay so move to the next question one question i can see in the chat box how do you encourage the patient to take morphine when they have the great fear of morphine this uh, despite explanation and they are having pain so i think they are counseling is the main role that is one second thing uh, we can start from the lower dose okay we can start from the lower dose and uh, uh, in some con condition we can ask them to take the uh, prn dose the breakthrough dose Uh, we will talk more in the next sessions so whenever they will take the more breakthrough dose we can calculate in the 24 hours how many breakthrough dose gone and accordingly we can go to the up level so they are feeling of that oh i will be addicted one thing second thing my patient will be sleeping the whole day so this kind of fear will reduce maybe so counseling is the main one thing second thing uh, we can introduce one patient uh, same who is having the same diagnosis same disease but having morphine safely so this kind of things can encourage them yes to uh, so this is correct uh, so uh, you can uh, give a um, uh, proper uh, explanation to the patient and the caregiver about most of the time uh, some kind of myth is there like uh, addiction uh, most of the time is patient is sleepy that kind of uh, things will be there but uh, when a patients come to you with severe pain if you usually we will give a morphine trial if you give a morphine trial to the patient definitely the patient's pain will come up, comes down so yeah. uh, that time you can uh, very easy to uh, give uh, instructions but if you uh, sometimes if you start a oral medication newly then a uh, little bit difficult but you if you give a proper explanation to the patient and the family definitely they will accept if you give a proper dosage it will not cause any addiction or any drowsiness so we have to check whether the patient is uh, really need morphine uh, that is why we uh, have learned today proper assessment how to do the proper assessment 
you have to check whether the patient is having no susceptible pain or neuropathic pain what is the pain score of the patients whether that medication any medication is taking or not if that medication is helpful to that patient that kind of things you have to how much time uh, the medication is beneficial to the patient these kind of things you should ask first then only you have to give a uh, uh, next uh, management if you if the patient is uh, on tramadol you uh, you have to ask them whether that tramadol is uh, helpful or not how much time they will get relief from uh, tramadol so if the tramadol is not helpful then you can stop tramadol and then you can start strong opioid yes okay so that kind of uh, things uh, anyway we have as uh, sudeep said uh, uh, next uh, one more session is there regarding opioids that and we will discuss more about it yes i even even in addition just i'll um, yeah, tell one of my mentor she told me one thing that this is the there is a very good example that whenever the people ask you the same question you can say that your pain is like a sponge and morphine is like a water so if you pour water in the sponge it will absorb easily but if we pour more than the its capacity then only it will spill outside and it can do the addiction so if you give according to its capacity according to the proper assessment then there will be no addiction this is the proper example actually uh, any other questions i think one questions is there if the patient yes, cannot okay. use so morphine. can you explain a little bit about the morphine infusion morphine. Uh, i think we have separate sessions no for strong opioids all right okay Good. Uh, yeah, so definitely we will discuss about that. Uh, we have a session on that. Uh, that time we will discuss more about it. Uh, today uh, we are discussing on the pain, uh, the initial uh, part only. Uh, what is pain? What are the different types of pain? How will we assess pain and all? So after that we have a two. We have two more session. One is management part one, and the another one is uh, management uh, pain part two. That is that session is. Uh, purely on opioids so that time we will discuss more about that but i can see they are encourage they are like enthusiasm to know more so <laughs> yeah, next yeah. please uh, yeah give some <laughs> suggestion okay vitamin infusion safe for a cancer patient again again it will we discuss whenever we will discuss in the management part now we are still in assessment we have to know the pain and all those things then we'll move to the management the next session then we'll discuss keep your pain yeah, yeah, yeah. keep uh, yeah. your question in your mind just you just uh, put it in the next session then we'll definitely come up with the solution that day it will be good then after my session this slide presentation half of your answer will be there So ketamine is good. Uh, ketamine is good for pain relief, but we will discuss in detail. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, time up uh, today. We have discussed many things about uh, pain, uh, especially uh, what is pain. Uh, pain. We need to understand that pain is what the says, uh, what the patient says words. So we need to believe the patient words. That is uh, one of the uh, most important. part we have to keep it in mind all the time so whenever the patient says pain you have to believe the patient words okay the next thing is uh, we have to uh, know uh, what are the type of pain nociceptive pain and neuropathy pain what are the features of pain that all things uh, sudeep has discussed and uh, now uh, along with that you have to understand that the Uh, pqrst of the pain like uh, uh, st pqrst assessment s is sight sight you have to identify the sight whenever the patient comes to you with pain you have to identify the sight uh, then d d is duration okay duration of pain then p p is palliative factor and pro provocative factor but the uh, palliative factor is there anything to comes down the pain score that is palliative factor is there any anything to increase the pain that is provocating factor p 
we next is q q is quality of pain what is the type of pain whether it's stabbing pricking that kind of aching type of the type is quality and then r is uh, radiating whether that pain pain is radiating to radiating from one part to another that is radiation so then next is severity sc severity severity if okay, you can uh, if the patient is able to uh, tell you that uh, uh, the score you can assess the numerical pain rating scale otherwise uh, you can uh, uh, that take uh, wong baker phase scale as uh, sudeep has mentioned earlier and uh, the last one is temporal factors so these are the things uh, uh, you can uh, keep it in mind while we assess the patient pain okay so these are the important points then only we can uh, give a uh, proper management if you do the proper assessment you can uh, do a better management to the patient okay uh, so uh, this is the important point i uh, just uh, need to highlight okay uh, see uh, can we move on to the case presentation part uh, sudeep yes yes Uh, Suraya, uh, okay, over to you. Can you able to see the slide? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay, over to you. Good evening to all. Today I'm presenting the case. As a, first of all, I will introduce myself. I'm Suraya Akhtar, working as a staff nurse in Government Medical College, Srinagar, in pain and palliative care. Okay. Uh, now I'm telling about the details of the patient. That, uh, it's a 17 year old male diagnosing with a CA rectum with metastasis, the whole body metastasis. Presenting complaints 17 year old male, complaint of age 4 CA rectum with bone mats. Reports unable to ablate without assistance, mostly wheelchair bound, because uh, every time when he, whenever he comes to pain killing, he is totally dependent on his dependents and his he always comes on the wheelchair. His has become very weak. Poor nutrition due to this oral intake, as the patient is not able to take food orally food as well, and um, he has have very much poor nutrition. Unable to move himself, needs complete assistance to get out of the bed. Because of that, he got some pressure ulcers also. Generalized weakness present. He has become so much weak, very weak, like bony skeleton he has become now. Feels depressed due to disease process, immobility, poor healing, pressure ulcer, and disturbed sleep patterns present here. He never he said that I I'm never sleep. I never sleep. Please give me something so that I can sleep. Now the history of illness. At the 17 year old patient diagnosed as a case of CA rec with bone meds in 2021. Received 11 cycles of chemotherapy last year of bleeding was present on PR, colonoscopy done, rectal mass biopsy done, which revealed circumferential growth. CCT done, points were multiple mets in liver. And around they said it's whole body metastasis. Now about the examination, being conscious and oriented, Vital signs are stable, temperature 98, pulse 78, respiration 26, BP 130, 80, saturation 95% on air, respiratory system, no cough and no dyspnea or wheezing is present, cardiovascular system, no palpitation and there's no history of chest pain till now. Gastrointestinal system is disturbed and the patient is having continuous abdominal pain. Nervous system, no head dizziness, negative history of seizures. 
urinary system, patient is complaining about polyuria. Local examination of pressure source, about one centimeter in diameter, almost round in shape, pressure is present. Treatment and investigations. All routine investigations done, CBC, HB 8 gram, platelet 3.8 lakhs, serum creatinine 1.9, urea 30 mg per deciliter, serum sodium 134 milliculans per liter, serum potassium 3.3 millimole per liter. Treatment, wound dressing daily done, and the medication for the, it uh, was some infection present also. Some antibiotics were also prescribed for the patients. Medication as the, what medication patient takes, tablet morphine 10 and 4 hourly, tap pentocid for DVD, paracetamol 800 release, SOS, tap gabapentin, vitriline, Toric Ox 60 MGV and IV fluids and the syrup crimophin at BT. Psychosocial aspects. Patient is unmeet with his parents. He also has two sisters, are younger, living each other together in a joint family. He's also anxious about risk management, recurrence, and complication. He's still in self-care deficit. And financial problems, financial crisis has arisen there. Patient is Muslim, unable to celebrate festivals and to visit his friends. Now the main concern the main concern is pressure sore, pain, diet of the patient, because the pain, the pain actually irritates him a lot. He is not able to sleep. He is totally disturbed because of the pain, continuous pain. Round o'clock, he is thinking about pain and about anxious anxiety, the financial problems. As his uh, parents are complaining about their, we have been drained of, or we are fin financially we have we are in loss. Nutrition, as uh, he doesn't take anything from his mouth, he sips of some juice or some water, and some kind of soup, totally disturbs his nutrition and family. Now the sorry. 17-year-old unmarried case of a C rectum with bones reports able to emit without assistance, mostly weed tear bound. He is depressed due to disease process, pain due to immobility and pressure ulcer. Generalized weakness present due to decreased oral intake and severe pain. Anxious about prognosis management and complications. Yeah, can you please change? A lot of background noise, uh, Suraya. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, a lot of background. Is it noise. okay, ma'am? Yeah, now it's okay. okay. Now it's okay. Now the discussion points. Okay. Has to be discussed in class based on patient story. As the patient is the case of a C rectum, how to give care to ear at home? How to take care of his and other physical problems? And how can we help to improve his quality of life by reducing his pain? Thank you, uh, Suraya, for the wonderful story. Uh, anybody need any more clarification regarding this patient story, please ask us. Otherwise, we can move on to the discussion points. I think the patient uh, story is clear to everyone. Anybody need any, any more clarification? Okay. Uh, 
Uh, okay, uh, we can move on to the discussion points. Uh, we would like to expect uh, from you all. Uh, now we understand how we will assess the pain and all. So just uh, want to hear from you all. Uh, Sudeep, over to you. Okay, first, first they will contribute, then I'll tell. Yes, yes. If you have seen these kind of patients in your settings, how will you manage? What are the assessment you will take for this uh, patient for uh, manage the pain? Either you can unmute yourself and talk or you can put your answers uh, or suggestions in the chat box. Nurses, please come up with, uh, with your answers. We are all our nurses. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, hi, Ms. Roy. I just have, uh, I have some questions. Like, let's say this patient is uh, diagnosed C rectum, right? Uh, my question is, why this patient don't have any... Any uh, colostomy for this patient? Uh, Suraya? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Vikneshwari is asking you uh, regarding the colostomy, why the colostomy is not doing for this patient. Is there any answer? Okay, so I feel, uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt. So many of the CA rectum patient, whenever we counsel for them uh, regarding the colostomy, so half of them, they deny. They don't want to have colostomy because they feel uh, it's dedicated to maintain and they feel like, okay, how it will be that my stool is coming through my abdomen. So they feels like that and they don't give their consent and because of the colostomy is not possible. That is one, whenever it's like pre, pre millionary uh, stages and whenever it got advanced, then it's very difficult that even patient may not be fit for the surgery also. So colostomy may not be possible. So whatever it is there, but uh, now the point is the patient is having different kind of issues. One is, patient is having pain, patient is having sleep disturbance, patient is having uh, pressure sore. So here, as the patient is having multiple metastasis, along with the patient is in home environment and he wanted the care to be in home environment, there we have to provide the patient a total care where physical, psychological, social, and spiritual, whatever I have shown you, in this uh, total pain management, this four aspect need to be covered. So for primarily, the patient cannot sleep. Patient may not having sleep because of the pain. So once we address the pain, then gradually, gradually uh, we can address the other things. Second, uh, like uh, pressure sore, uh, whether the daily dressing is doing, whether she or uh, whether the patient is having pain where while doing the dressing so different kinds of history has to be taken what are the medication the patient is taking whether the doses of the medication is appropriate for the patient these are yeah. the things we have to see primarily then followed by whatever the financial conditions, financial support the patient, will, we can connect to the NGOs, we can connect to the other of the other sources, okay, through volunteers, then definitely 
the we can provide the good quality care to the patient even in the home environment yes uh, like yeah so uh, so the, uh, you are correct uh, here uh, i want to uh, give more uh, information regarding this patient story uh, so you have asked about the colostomy so here is a 17 year old uh, patient is CA, diagnosed with ca rectum with bone mets uh, so before doing any interventional procedures we need to check the patient condition if they have a metastasis there uh, we usually the prognosis if the pro, the patient's prognosis is not good we don't do any this kind of interventional procedures so if the patient's condition is good uh, if the patient's physical condition is only CA rectum, then we will think about colostomy. So here is the bone metastasis and the another, uh, other organs we don't know. Uh, sometimes the other uh, the organs like uh, lung mix uh, and that kind of, yeah. In CSAT, it's already defined that liver mets also there. Yeah. So these kind of things there. That time we won't suggest any these kind of interventional procedures like yes. colostomy. I have seen one patient. Uh, she is a 29 year old woman, CA rectum, lung meds, uh, and uh, liver meds. And uh, the family has uh, uh, told us to give uh, the, do the colostomy. Uh, so we uh, we are uh, discussing. Uh, for the family members, uh, that is not a good uh, solution. Uh, this is this kind of metastasis is there. So, but the uh, the family is reluctant to our uh, that uh, things that they will. Um, they were thinking like, no, no, we will do it. Uh, the definitely the after uh, the colostomy, she she is able to she uh, walk. Uh, she is able to do anything. Uh, that kind of things still uh, there. So we were uh, discussing um, uh, three times uh, for a family meeting. We conducted a family meeting like uh, husband, fa father, mother, uh, brother, and all. So they were not uh, uh, that accept these things. They they uh, she underwent colostomy. Uh, sadly, uh, uh, I would say on the third day post operative period, uh, she passed away. So that is the uh, things I want to discuss with you all. Uh, so we, whenever we take these kind of uh, decisions, uh, we have to discuss with the family and uh, we need to uh, try to convince the family members as much as we can. So here also, I think uh, most probably uh, because of the meds, multiple uh, meds uh, the doctor, doctor is reluctant to do uh, suggest this kind of uh, colostomy or like other interventional procedures. What do you think, Sudhir? Yes, yes, absolutely correct. And definitely, uh, like in our hospital, no, even uh, I was posted in OT. Recently, I came in palliative care. Uh, previously, last, last six months, I was posted in OT. So I have encountered the same type of patient, actually. So after, after uh, diagnosed, doctor asked to do track, uh, colostomy they were not willing okay then the patient got bone metastasis lung metastasis now they want to do colostomy as because patient cannot pass stool per rectum okay so now they opened the case they decided to do the surgery they open also after opening they saw that the intestine is not that healthy that uh, they cannot do perform the uh, like colostomy and if they do also this side, the colostomy side, it will either necrosis will happen or either it will uh, like bleed like anything. So better to close and they close. So these kind of things happens actually. Physical fitness is required. That is one. And third thing, I just wanted to confirm with the presenter. There was one patient was getting patient is getting morphine. Okay, and she uh, the patient is getting cremafin bt what is cremafin bt so it's a lactose like syrup 
no no i know uh, I, i know cremafin it's uh, market in the name of cremafin plus or normal cremafin mam bt so actually bt is a uh, bad time oh it's a bad time <laughs> oh yes <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, we can't set it right like that, bro. That abrasion. Yes, ma'am. Can, can we write like that abrasion? The BT bedtime. Okay. From next time, whenever you do the presentation, because this BT no every setup they are not using the same. Oh, okay. 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 No combination came out. We are not using that side. <laughs> Okay, but in our side, it's uh, it's quite uh, understood. Oh, okay. Yes, I ask from you. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. So basically, <laughs> yes. basically, morphine works on central nervous system, and because of that, peristaltic movement used to diminish. Okay. So gastric mortality used to reduce. So normal cremafin, it has only the mushing effect, no pushing effect. Means. it will make the heart stool as a cream okay so this patient as he is uh, the patient is having pain so the, for this patient they need cremafin plus with combination of cremafin plus is the combination of sodium picosulfate which has the push effect also so whenever the patient will pass stool every day okay and it will be like not that hard then the patient pain will automatically reduce maybe sometimes it affect it gives a very good effect okay so according to the morphine the uh, stool softener is not perfect i feel i don't know uh, shiva can uh, yeah so uh, regarding uh, morphine so because because uh morphine is the good drug for uh, pain uh, relief uh, especially cancer pain but it has some uh, side effect uh, the most common side effect is constipation yes. so it has uh, the morphine has reduced the intestinal motility so we need to give a stimulant laxity okay so the morphine will give a stimulant uh, that give uh, the improve the intestinal motility okay the gas the bowel movement Uh, it will increase okay so uh, otherwise uh, the patients will get constipation so if the patient if you give a morphine to the patient definitely you will think about the stimulant laxatives and also you can think about the stool softener if that uh, stimulant laxative is not helpful then you can add a, a, a stool softener also cremafin plus or something like that so definitely you have to add some stimulant laxative okay and uh, another points i would like to ask you uh, about 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 the pain uh, condition you were uh, saying like the his main concern is pain uh, did he get adequate pain relief with 10 mg morphine suraya he came every day in our clinic for pain killers please give me some pain killer please give me some pain killer uh, uh, so, yeah so he is not getting adequate pain relief 10 mg morphine right yes ma'am so then what is uh, your uh, plan next ma'am um, now they are thinking of doctors are thinking about for ketamine infusion uh, that's okay. why i was asking about that where is he right now uh, he's at home right now okay uh, so you have to check whether the patient is uh, taking uh, the medication properly or not we have yes, we need to check ah uh, yeah tell me we told we told him um, whether you are taking the, the medication properly or not but he said yes i'm taking it at the right time as you have said okay then uh, how much time they, uh, he will get pain relief with the uh, 10 mg morphine or never to over any any no. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, nowadays he is saying that I am not getting any relief from this four hour day. That's why the doctors are thinking. Um, I think um, they should try for the ketamine infusion now. Okay, not responding uh, uh, pay, uh, the pain with this medication, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Uh, oh, okay. So, oh yeah. Then you you can admit and uh, uh, do something uh, and. Uh, 
uh, i would say you have to take the psychosocial assessment part uh, he is uh, very anxious about his prognosis can you go back uh, next go next next yes uh, you get next previous so here we can uh, if you look into the psychosocial aspects uh, he is he has some financial problems uh, he is anxious about his prognosis uh he is not able to uh, study he is not able to do anything he is bed bound lot of psychosocial issues there no we have to uh, explore that part so even because... the patient is only 17 years old no yeah yes sir. 17 years old patient whenever his friends are going outside this the, so many actually this uh, young stars no they are having so much of uh, basically psychosocial issues when they are suffering from any kind of chronic illness yeah so you have to check into that part once you explore the psychosocial issues because uh, last time uh, i uh, uh, told you uh, regarding the psychosocial aspects uh, uh, during the introduction class so because uh, if they have a psychosocial issues there uh, definitely the physical uh, distress will be increased Mm. i have so, i have a patient like that so we have give a more uh, that uh, tramadol first we uh, given uh, more the tramadol first then the patient was not getting adequate pain relief then uh, we changed uh, to morphine then uh, the patient is not getting pain relief uh, after to the initially he got some kind of relief then uh, gradually uh, he told us like oh, no i am not getting uh any pain relief with this medication then uh 20 mg we uh, increase the dose 20 mg for hourly but the patient is not getting any uh, any any side effect any toxic effect of morphine uh the patient says like not getting any pain relief and uh, insomnia plus loss of appetite plus these kind of uh, complaints uh, were there then we uh, took uh, his uh, psychosocial uh, assessment and then uh, we understand that lot of psychosocial issues uh, his uh, the uh, that uh, first uh, he has uh, three um, uh, that uh, uh, daughters and one got married and uh, uh, he uh, got some loan from bank uh, after his uh, her marriage he got his illness uh, this illness he is not able to uh, that uh, pay that amount to the bank and then bank has sent the uh, letter Uh, so these kind of things the second uh, daughter is studying in ttc uh, the sec uh, he uh, she is not able to pay the second year fee those then the pr principal told her to uh, do the payment then uh, that is the another issue the third uh, child uh, daughter is studying ninth standard uh, so that kind of issues is there so uh, what we do is we address the, those issues and finally the patient said uh, like oh i i got some i definitely uh, then uh, after uh, this settlement is over then the patient said uh, as to okay now i am uh, i am getting good pain relief and uh, i am okay to die any time so i am satisfied i am uh, comfortable now that kind of thing so just imagine a patient from the patient side lot of psychosocial issues the if you if they have a psychosocial issues there they your pain medication will not help much partially will help you have to uh, elicit uh, the psychosocial part and uh, give some suggestions or solutions about uh, if if possible you can give some uh, solutions for that and along with that you can try some medications non pharmacological and pharmacological management you can come back together yeah only pharmacological is not works properly it has to be together pharmacology and non pharmacology and non pharmacological measurements this all counseling these things comes in between all the then even whatever the slides we can see the last point you see mostly un unable to celebrate the festivals also so there are so many psychosocial issues you will find whenever you will go for the psychosocial assessment so yeah. these patients need proper assessment okay
thank you uh, so i think uh, we can wind up time up uh, so any uh, any uh, last minute question any any question i think uh, no more questions uh, can we wind up sudeep yes yes sure uh, thank you uh, sudeep for the wonderful uh, session uh, so i think uh, they uh, learned uh, most of the important point from your session today and uh, now uh, they all learned about how to assess pain or what importance you can give to the pain assessment and management and uh, that all things uh, i hope they will understand uh, thank you suraya for bringing up a, a wonderful patient story today uh, thank, thank you, you ma'am thank you one second thank you all for thank joining mr subhash somebody is asking the uh, i think ppt ppt yeah, we will we will send it to you yeah senia will send it to you senia okay thank you, you and thank you uh, suraya also for your presentation yeah thank you sir okay thank you all for joining us today i uh, have shared the feedback link with you all kindly fill it up and uh, the learning materials are the first uh, learning materials of first session are uploaded in the iaco platform you can directly log into iaco.org to your account and in the content list there will be all the learning materials you can fetch it download keep it thank you all bye thank you thank you ma'am